Well, hello there, and welcome to this episode of The Terry Cole Show. I want to ask you a question. Do you ever find yourself sort of minimizing negative things from the past? Maybe having selective memory, where you think back to a relationship that actually caused you a ton of pain, but you're like, but these were the good things too. You know, almost like hyper-positivity, but when it comes to things that have happened in the past, because I find this to be a very common thing that happens with my therapy clients, so I figured if it's happening with them, maybe it's happening with you too. So in today's episode, I'm actually going to be covering what is euphoric recall, why it's dangerous, and what you can do instead. So before we get moving into this episode, if you happen to be new to my YouTube channel, we'll say hello in the comments, why don't you? And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can notify it every time I roll out something new, which is every Tuesday and every Thursday. You know why? Because I wouldn't want you to miss a thing. That's why. So do me a favor, subscribe, hit the bell. I also love to shine a light on your comments and your questions, and I appreciate how interactive this YouTube channel is. So thank you guys for being here and being you. And today I want to shine a light on Tal D under the video, Happiness Habits to Start Today. And they write, love this, slowing down and noticing the small things are big ones for me. I find these make the most impact for me feeling happy or not. It also feeds into what I'm trying to do lately, which is to notice how I feel after certain activities or meeting with people and then trying to curate from there more of the activities and people that bring me energy and joy and less of the others. Well, how smart are you, Tal D? That is a great thing to do to figure out where you should be spending your time and energy in your precious one-of-a-kind life. So thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing. I appreciate you being here. All right. Let's move into today's content. So what is euphoric recall? That is what we are going to be talking about this entire episode. Euphoric recall is a state in which an individual remembers the past sort of with rose-colored glasses, right? It exaggerates the positive experience and sort of minimizes or fails to bring up altogether the negative experience. So, of course, this can't be real, right? We can't only think of the good, but that's what euphoric recall really is. Now, a lot of times we will hear this referenced in addiction circles. And other ways of saying this are romancing the high, sort of remembering the fun you had when you used to drink, and stopping short of remembering how disastrous it became eventually if you're someone who is in recovery. And this is something that I stopped drinking. Many of you know, when I was 21, that it's very easy to think back to all the fun times when it comes to drugs or alcohol. The reason I'm doing this episode on euphoric recall is because someone wrote in, I always ask you guys, hey, what do you want me to talk about? I've talked about, you know, 500 episodes on YouTube and my podcast, but I'm sure there's still things that you want to know about. So please, if there are things you want me to cover, let me know. Anyway, so this person did let me know, and therefore that is why this is what we're covering today. The addiction world, it, it's sort of clean cut where you, you get it. You're romancing the high. You're only thinking of the good. This is also something that happens readily in relationships and especially in toxic relationships, a relationship with a narcissist, the surviving person may fall into this trap of euphoric recall. And let's talk about why that would happen. Well, if we're talking about, let's say a narcissistic relationship, you have the love bombing period of that relationship. Now, if you're unclear about what that is, that's in the beginning of a relationship with a narcissist, everything feels perfect. It seems perfect. They're saying all the right things. Sex is amazing. You know, you're remembering that romantic night in the West Village where you walked around for hours and then made love in the hotel and all the things. If it's an actual narcissistic relationship cycle, that is a part of the cycle. And it's so powerful the love bombing phase, 
because while you're in it, and it could last six weeks, it could last longer. You know, every every situation is different. You just can't even believe it. You just can't even believe your lucky stars. Instead of thinking, wow, if it feels too good to be true, maybe it is too good to be true. You know, you're in it being like, wow, all my prayers have been answered. This is the perfect person for me, because here's the thing. They're telling you how perfect you are right? They're telling you how perfect you are and how good that feels, right? Just having someone tell you how amazing you are, the most beautiful body, the most beautiful person, how special you are, all of that stuff is very heady and super seductive. It is like a drug unto itself. So the same way we can become nostalgic for our party days you can become nostalgic for what was good in that relationship. And I think that what's really painful about all of this is that if we're talking about drugs and alcohol or if we're talking about a toxic relationship, this euphoric recall is a slippery slope. A, it's not based in reality because if it were only all that good stuff, whether it's your use or whether it's the relationship, you wouldn't have stopped using and you wouldn't have gotten out of the relationship or the relationship wouldn't have ended. So we know that the reality in euphoric recall is skewed. We are not remembering things in an authentic and truthful way. You know, we also call this like selective perception or selective memory. There's lots of different ways to refer to this phenomenon. But why do we care about the phenomenon? Well, if you're talking about addiction or if you're talking about a toxic relationship, because those of you who have escaped either one of those experiences, have worked your way out of them, you know how friggin' hard it is. Getting out of a toxic relationship, especially with a narcissist, because part of that process, there's a devaluing, yes, but then there's usually a hoovering phase we talk about where they come back and they're trying to find any way to get you back into the cycle of abuse with them because they are needing what we call narcissistic supply, which is basically your emotions become their narcissistic supply. Your sad emotions, your any emotions become their supply. Them having power over you to make you feel a particular thing. And a lot of times it's bad things. They're making you feel, they're making you upset, you're crying. That is their narcissistic supply. And I know it's like so depressing when, when you actually think about like, wow, this is an actual psychological disorder, how freaking depressing, but it is what it is. So when euphoric recall makes you vulnerable to relapsing, whether it's relapsing on drugs and alcohol or whether it's relapsing or porn or whatever, whatever the addiction is. Because when you really look at narcissistic relationship patterns, there is an addictive element to them as well. It's hitting the same part of the brain, right? This euphoric recall, why can we talk about it in both spheres? Because there is that similarity in it. Now, let's talk about what you can do if you find yourself ruminating in this positive way, if you are experiencing euphoric recall for a relationship or for your drug or alcohol days or whatever it is. Let's get into what you can actually do to change it and let's establish that it's based on a false narrative. So we have to be honest with ourselves that it's based on a false narrative, it's not real because nothing in life is all good or all bad, right? There's there's nuances. We have shades of gray in everything. So when we are using that selective memory to think about that amazing trip to Paris, to think about how amazing the sex was and telling ourselves we're never gonna have sex like that again with anyone else, that is like a slippery slope. It's literally like walking you back towards the burning house that you managed to get yourself out of. So we need to do something that's going to pattern interrupt, I would call it, right? We need a pattern interrupt for this process because in a way, this euphoric recall, it can feel good momentarily, but it's not accurate. 
what you are recalling is not true. And what it's really doing is putting you in danger. It's putting you in danger to get back into a toxic relationship or to start drinking or picking up drugs again or whatever it may be. So we need to have a pattern interruption. So first things first is I want you to play the tape forward. I want you to not stop at the part of the beautiful Paris weekend. I want you to play the tape forward. What happened next? Don't let yourself off the hook, right? There has to be, there has to be taking responsibility and owning up to the truth of what you experienced in your life. What were the consequences of staying in that relationship? And don't worry, I'm, I, I'll create a little guide for you. You'll go to terrycole.com forward slash guide. And I have this, you know, three steps that you can take to protect yourself from falling into the trap of euphoric recall, because we do not want to do that. So you're going to play the tape forward and you're going to start to list the consequences of those actions. What happened? And, and you're really going to challenge yourself. Am I remembering the whole picture, right? That's going to be a question. What happened after that? After that euphoric thing, then what happened? A week later, a month later, a year later, what actually happened? If you are thinking about a relationship, a toxic relationship, you'll answer the question, why did we actually split? You'll answer the question, how did I feel the majority of the relationship? Because that's really what it's about. It, those peak experiences, you guys, this doesn't make up life. Every day, the mundane, right? Our day-to-day -day lives are not a weekend in Paris. Our day-to-day -day lives are how understood we are, how well someone knows us, how well someone treats us, how cared about we are, right? If you have gotten out of a toxic relationship, you have to also make yourself remember how that person manipulated you, how that person mocked you, right? How that person was unkind, how that person isolated you from your friends and family, how that person made you feel like shit about yourself. That is reality recall and not just euphoric recall. And yes, it can be confusing having amazing times, whether it's using drugs and alcohol or whether it's, you know, thinking of a toxic relationship when the times were great. That is confusing. Right? You're like, how can it be both? But it can. And it is because this is what we, you've experienced in your life. So that's the first thing is we're going to play the tape forward and do a little bit of uh, reality testing. And the second thought I have for you is really from Dr. Romani, who's amazing. You guys, if you're, if you're into narcissism, then obviously you must know her work because she is the foremost expert in the world, probably, on narcissistic abuse. I am a huge fan. And she suggests making an ick list, which I thought was kind of a funny name, so I didn't change it, when you start slipping into euphoric recall so that you can look at it when you start slipping. So you actually have to make a list of all the crappy things, of all the painful stuff that you dealt with in this relationship. And when you see yourself ruminating positively and thinking only of the good, you're going to pull out your ick list and remember all the other shit that actually happened. All of the painful stuff that you experienced in that relationship. Yeah, that's what you're doing. I mean, a lot of times we want to move on and I understand that, but this list is something that's going to help you not slip back because that's really what we want to avoid is slipping back into behavior that does not serve your greatest good. And the last thought I have for you is to choose an accountability pal, a friend, someone you can trust, someone who's emotionally trustworthy themselves, of course, but you want someone who's gonna keep you honest. And you can tell them, hey, I'm falling into this pattern where I'm thinking of only the good when it comes to me and Bob. You know, can I call you? Will you remind me? I give you permission if you wanna be my accountability pal. Will you remind me of how you were there you know how miserable I was, how much of my life I spent bawling my eyes out, how terrible my sleep was, how high my anxiety was. You know it. So can you please 
lovingly remind me of that when I slip back into that euphoric recall experience. Because here's the thing, you guys, I want you looking forward, right? We have to take care of ourselves, right? When it comes to addiction and recovery, you know, we're never recovered. You get it? We're always recovering. And I feel the same way about surviving an abusive relationship. You're still the same person, even though you got out of it. So what we want to do is we want to build the strength in you, your self-esteem, your boundaries, your ability to talk true, to be authentic in your life. That is looking forward, not looking backward, but we cannot forget where we came from. I can never forget that I am an alcoholic in recovery because if I ever do, I am putting everything that I've built in this life in peril, everything. But what do we say in the rooms? That anything you put above your recovery, you lose. And I believe that to be true. So this is the same. Don't let time and distance make you forget how much that experience was ruining your quality of life. In an abusive relationship, you don't have any quality of life. No matter what else is happening. Because there's always this scary, walking on eggshells, heavy experience in your home life, if you're living with someone who's abusive. And it's the same thing with being any kind of an addict. Even if it looks like you had it all together, trust me, no one even knew what was going on with me because I was so good at hiding it. I was so high functioning. They were like, she's amazing. Nobody knew how much I was blacking out. Nobody knew how much I was passing out, all of those things. And I had to come to terms with that and I did in my own therapy, but I, don't forget that that's what my life was when I was actively drinking. I'm so clear. I mean, I stopped in 1987, obviously it's been a long time, but you know, I'm so clear that that cannot be a part of my life, but I never take the fact that I don't drink for granted because it always requires a certain amount of effort and awakeness and awareness about yourself and your behavior. Anyway, I hope that this was helpful to you. I hope it added value to your life. If it did, oh, please share it with the people in your world. Don't forget to go get the guide that I made for you at terrycole.com forward slash guide. I hope you guys have an amazing week. And as always, take care of you.